Fellas, say goodbye to Chuck Sherman the boy. I am now a man. I highly recommend you join the club. We are doing the wild thing all night. Taxi pouch music. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Sherman. Sherman, I cook all this food. Is that all you gonna eat? General Sherman realized and understood the importance of house music. So, do you know anything about techno? No. Listen. Get it on. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another brand new episode of Sherman the Booth. I'm, of course, your host, Sherm. Today is Wednesday, April 8th, 2020. This is episode 105, 105. Hope everybody is staying safe and staying inside. Again, I know this is such a crazy time right now for everybody, but it's so important that we follow the rules, we help each other out, and we're all going to look back on this soon and think, eh, that wasn't so bad. But it's time for another new interview, guys, and I'm so excited about this one. She goes by the name of Miss DJ Meg. Miss DJ Meg, and if you don't recognize the name, I'm confident you've heard her on the airwaves on Chicago's most popular radio station, B96. She's the first and only female DJ on B96, and she has earned her stripes. She's one of the most popular DJs here in Chicago as well, playing at the biggest clubs and bars across the city. But we had such a great time. It was me, her dog, and a little bit of Jameson, and we got deep. We talked about her musical influences growing up, how she's always staying unique and challenging the status quo as an open format DJ in such a competitive city. And Meg also opened up a little bit about her depression and what it's like behind the scenes as a successful DJ. For those who are listening that aren't a DJ, let alone involved in the music industry, there really is a whole nother side to this stuff, guys. And Meg talks about how she overcomes these obstacles and who she leads on in a time of need. But This was so much fun talking to her. She's really got a great story, and we just had a blast. So without further ado, guys, I'll let you listen in for yourself. This is episode 105 with Miss DJ Meg. Okay, all right, I'm set up. We're recording. Yes. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Our daily struggles now are quite different. I know. Like, I've done, this is my second Skype interview and I've done them before but I'm so used to like my usual thing like have like three different ways to record it just in case because you know you want to have plan a b and c so right yeah we should be good though so how are you cheers hey (laughs) wow that's like a Chelsea Handler size glass actually it's really tiny really yeah it looks really big well you got a fat pour then at least I know I did pour a little more like <laughs> it's pre-made sangria. I was going to like throw some free cut fruit in there. Oh, sangria. I know I had a wow. taste for it. Listen, it was I'm... either that or like some shots of Jameson, which we can get to at some point. That's what I'm drinking here. So maybe we'll, we'll... Right. Oh, well then I'll probably join you soon. All right. Is Jameson your drink? I love Jameson. Oh man. Me too. <laughs> I always like Jameson. I started drinking tequila, but I don't like tequila. Yeah? Yeah, it's just easier for me to drink, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I, I wasn't getting sick from it. I think Jameson and I started getting really bad hangovers. Oh, my God. I don't care what they say. I get hungover off all types of alcohol. It does right. Not That's the thing. Like, I don't think there's a certain alcohol that makes you more hungover, act a certain way, you know? No, not at all. I It's a drink until I'm drunk, and then I... And then I'm out of control, and then yeah. I, uh-huh. <laughs> and then I'm hungover the next day. Even now, like we've still been kind of partying a little too hard on the weekends. Oh my god, I, this is probably like the most alcohol I've ever bought. Really? I won't. You're stocking up. Actually, maybe. Yeah. I haven't like been drinking it like crazy. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe a little more than usual because, like, you know, if I'm sitting here by myself and I'm bored, I'm like. <laughs> I have nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah, if it's you've already done your thing all day, then it's okay. Yeah, like I'm like okay, I'm being productive. I can give myself a drink. Why not? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. we we just like I'm. I have one roommate, and my girlfriend's been here, and his girlfriend's been here. So we kind of just been like hanging out, and like on the weekends, I don't know, just like end up drinking and getting drunk yeah. and. It's been, I'm doing okay overall, I would say. So, staying busy. My girlfriend and her friend and I, we hung out in my 
car last night, like in front of like her friend's house, like because literally, like where else were we gonna go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> like, well, I mean, awesome. we had nothing else to do, you know, and like, yeah, there's nowhere you can go. You can't even like go to a 24 hour jewel because they're not 24 hours anymore. No, that's true. And Jewel Osco's low key have good deals on uh, on their bar, really good deals. I, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever drank at a grocery store, but clearly I have. Oh, before. yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Mariano's. Like... It's a weird place to be at, but you kind of feel like, oh, yeah, like this is how you do it, actually. It's like you're so out of place that you're in place. Like, it's just so weird that it's fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I they used to live near. Deals. They do. I used to live near Jewel Osco. And man, the bartender there, he was such a nice guy. He would give us free shots of Malort, which I think was more of a, a joke oh. on us, but. Uh, Still free, and he would pour like candle candle holder size shots. You know what I mean? Like those big boys are yeah. like, like if you order shot, you this happens all the time when I'm DJing, right? You're like you order shots, and they don't have shot glasses, so they pour them in just like a cocktail like glass, glasses. like this high, and you're like, oh, okay. See, I prefer when they pour them in those. Well, only if I have to carry them from the bar to the yes. DJ booth. Yeah. Because if they put them in the little glasses, mm -hmm. like especially at Fremont, when the DJ booth is like two miles away from the bar, I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> By the time I get there, it's all on the ground. I know Fremont. If because sometimes I'll play like, well, you know, they'll like extend your sets there, especially to close. Mm -hmm. And if I play like a four hour set there, and I have to like sprint to the bathroom, I look like I'm fucking Spider Man. I'll like. <laughs> <laughs> put on a long intro and just like doo -doo, like jump right. out of the, and run over to the other bathroom because like I don't want anybody to see me and like if you're not if they're if it's crowded and or even like a little bit crowded and there's no DJ in the booth like oh, I'm no. so like, out of all the places I feel it. like yeah so you well the the employees are so great there so usually I'll be like hey just look busy or something yeah like but watch free, this while but, I go pee <laughs> yeah exactly so I go as fast as I possibly can but I know exactly what you mean like I don't mind because usually we drink for free, but yeah. sometimes it's like a big gulp and that can no. be a bit much. And I, I like can't take shots for whatever reason. Like I take shots, I drink them, but I drink them in like threes or fours. Right, that's it fine. It takes me a while to get it all down and everyone's yeah. like, seriously? <laughs> like what the fuck are you doing? Just throw it in the back of your throat. I'm like, no, I don't know how to do that. I've never been able to. Like, yeah, fine. Never did beer bongs in college. Like, yeah. <laughs> I can't like chug things fast. I don't know. That's fine. I can't either. And that was never my thing. Like beer bonging. I went to. I'm from Indiana, and I went to IU. Yeah. So the the beer culture there is like chug beer, drink beer, shotgun beer, beer bong beer. I'm like, dude, like I got a little, I got a weak <laughs> stomach, man, and like That's enough. Like, I'm, I'm 18 table. years old and you're telling me to drink two beers at once in less than five seconds? Like, you gotta be kidding me. I know, it's so sloppy. So sloppy. I'm like, Gager. I so, ugh. Uh, it's the oh, worst yeah. alcohol. And yeah. like... They're terrible. I mean, we were at eight, like of age at some point, so it's like, why are we drinking the worst shit ever? The worst shit. Disgusting. Oh Once I got God. to Chicago, though, things I got a little, I got much better. I drank whiskey on the rocks. I drank IPAs. Here I am now, so mature, still drinking Jameson. Right, like I, my palate changes, I guess, like pretty often. I mean, when it was shots, it was always Jameson. Yeah. Like occasionally, I would get like a JMO and ginger, like yeah. I mean, I used to drink rum and coke, like, religiously for five years. <laughs> like, that was my shit. Yeah. Like, I don't know why. Maybe because it was easy for me to drink. Like, it is one sweet. Down really smooth. Yeah. But I got one, like, you know, when bars were still open, like, not yeah. too long ago. Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh, my God. I used to drink these every weekend. Like, this is so <laughs> sweet. Ugh. It was so nice. Wasn't the same. No, I'm like, no wonder I stopped drinking these. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's actually incredible because I used to drink those too. It was like Captain and Coke. That was just like one of the first alcohol you ever drink, I feel like, yep. is always rum. Because it's yeah. easy it's chase. I drink, yeah, Captain and Coke. I guess it is kind of good sometimes. You gotta be in the mood. Yeah, you gotta be in the mood. It's been a while. You've you've inspired me. I'm trying to get into a little mixology here, you know, a little this, a little that. So I, I'll go for it. Right, and now's the time to like learn. 
Yeah, we made uh, old fashions and we put way too much simple syrup in them and we all had a headache halfway through it. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, like, let's just stick to what we know. So, slowly but surely, though. That's so funny. So everybody's, everybody's doing new things these days to keep themselves busy, though. Yeah. No, seriously. Like, I'm finding all these projects. I'm like, wow, I would have never done this shit if mm-hmm. it wasn't a quarantine right now. For real. But I'm also, like, cool. I'm getting stuff done, you know? Yeah, I know. Hopefully it doesn't go on for so long where we're like, okay, like, I'm yeah. out of things <laughs> I have. <laughs> right, like, okay, it's enough now. One of my things to do clean was get in shape. Twice. Yeah, clean the closet twice, get in shape. Like, okay, like, I can't keep doing this. Right. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm glad you're staying busy. You seem fine. Like, I've talked to some people, and they're just like, yeah, I just, I'm going crazy. Well, it, you know, it's interesting. Like, every day, like, you know, uh, I'll talk to like friends or I've been talking to people who I haven't talked to in years, which is kind of nice, you know, yeah, are true. Reaching out more. yeah, but it's just, it's just such a weird time for everybody. And like, it, it, everyone's just so bored and people are kind of like losing it on different days. Like one day I'll talk to, to a friend and he'll be like, I'm fucking losing my mind. Yeah. And then the next day he's like, I'm having a great day. <laughs> and I'm the same way. I, I'm like, oh my god, I lost it the other night. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, oh my neighbor. I'm like, I've had it with her. They're like, why? Like she puts on a concert for me every day. You would think being a DJ, like that, yeah. it wouldn't bother me. But uh-huh. her, her bass like rattles a wall, and like she'll do it like super late. And it was like the night that I was having my meltdown from all of this. I'm like, oh. no. <laughs> I was like hitting my wall with like a muffin stand. <laughs> I made all these black marks on the wall. I'm like, oh my God. Because I was so mad. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, there I am with the like Mr. Clean Dry Eraser. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is my life now, I guess. <laughs> That's a great story, actually. Just you and your dog. Like, hi, how are you? Yes. I know. I told my friend that he's like, you know you lost it i'm like i did but i got it back like I'm yeah okay now. <laughs> i'm like don't worry your day is coming too i'm like don't even talk shit to me <laughs> yeah as long as you found yourself you're good we're back this yeah. is this is miss dj meg right this is not an alter alter yeah. version of you it's just like you know every day like keeping busy and i'm trying to stay positive well i'm so glad we could do this i really appreciate you taking time i mean i know all we got is time but still no i love it it's nice it means a lot. Um, so again, thank you. And I want to acknowledge you. Like you're so fucking rad and so nice for how talented you are. And I'm sure you can. You know, you're gonna say no, I'm not or whatever. But you really are. And I know that you know people that I know probably that like aren't the same. You know, as you that are talented but don't treat other people with respect who are trying to make a name. And you've always been so nice to me. And I've only heard the greatest things about you. And thank you. wear your heart on your sleeve. And I think that's badass. Thank you. That's really nice of you. Absolutely. I try, to, I try to be nice to everyone I come in contact with, unless they talk shit to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> follow me, and then I'm going to buy doors that way. <laughs> See, you're the best type of person. It's like, if you're on my good side, you're on my good side. If you're on my bad side, you're on my bad side. It's so hard to get on my bad side, because I yeah. really hate confrontation. I don't yeah. like arguing with people. I don't like fighting with people. I don't see the point of it you know i mean if something's bothering me or upsets me i'm gonna tell them but yeah i try to have a positive experience with everybody yeah absolutely well i mean you're so talented for everything you do but i want to start at the beginning where are you originally from are you chicagoland i well yeah uh like outskirts um so i'm from the north suburbs of glenview yep absolutely what is around there like northbrook Highland Park, uh, yep. Niles. Yeah, I know. My, my day job is in uh, logistics, so you know I'm from Indiana. I know every single suburb of Chicago and how many miles it is from either way and how to get there. It's, it's just an innate knowledge I have, so I know right where you're at. Yeah. That's awesome. When did, when did music come into your life then? I mean, I know you've been in the game for a little while now, and Chicago's got so much rich history of tons of different types of music. Were you your know, parents like- musical? They aren't actually like at really? all. <laughs> I mean, they like they would always play music for me in the car. Like my mom told me that like when I was younger, I was obsessed with um, the theme song from Pretty Woman, <laughs> <laughs> Roy Oberson. 
like pretty yeah. woman yeah walking down, walking down the street. street yeah that's good my mom you know and like cassettes were like the thing back then so she mm-hmm. had my brother like record that song like 15 times on the same cassette so she didn't have to keep rewinding it because i was like again 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 <laughs> which is funny because i still do the same thing if i find like a new song that i love in my yeah. car like, by myself i'm like again <laughs> <laughs> I do that too. I like, I just, I just take a song and I take it down to the bone sometimes if I just can't right? get enough. I know. I'm like, how am I not sick of this yet? But yeah, I started like super young. I think my first interest in DJing was I was on a cruise ship mm-hmm. and um, there was like a company like, you know, it was an activity on the cruise, like, o- yeah. like offering like scratch lessons. Nice. And now that I think back to that, I mean, a monkey could have taught that class. Like, it was <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was like, yeah. but at the time I'm like, wow, like look what I'm doing. You know? Right, and right. I thought it was so cool and I wanted to do it, but I, like I had no idea like where to start, what to buy, who to learn from, you know, and like YouTube wasn't really a big thing. Like or at least there weren't like tutorials or anything back yes, then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I had a couple of friends um, that worked for a mobile DJ company. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was like in high school, I believe. Like first, first or second year, I was like 15 or 16. Mm-hmm. And um, they worked at the company as dancers, you know, like for like bar mitzvahs, weddings. Oh, yeah. Bring the heat, baby. Yeah, of course. Yes. So I asked like one of my friends, I'm like, are they hiring? And she's like, oh, yeah, they're always hiring dancers. I'm like, I don't want to dance. They're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, I want to fucking DJ. Hell like, yeah. <laughs> like, no. I'm like, I'm trying to le- learn how to DJ. I'm like, do they do that? Well, like, they train me. And she's like, I mean, they train the dancers. They train the DJs. Like, she's like, I'm sure they would train you. We have, we don't have any girl DJs. I'm like, oh. Wow. So she got me, like, an interview with um, the owner of the company. And then he ended up hiring me. And, like, the different, like, MCs and um, I forgot who else. Uh, like there were a couple dancers as well and other DJs that like were just veterans. Like they taught me so much. They really like taught me everything. That's great. Did you get like your own controller? Did like you use theirs or how did that work? I bought, I don't remember where I got it from, but I had like a little like shitty Denon mixer. and Nice. Two like little like, (laughs) I mean, not CDJs because they were Denon's, but yeah. Like, the platters, like, would come off, you know? Oh, like, yeah, of course. And I would write down, like, all the songs I was going to do in a mix, you know? And, like, say, like, write down the time when it would come in. Like, I'd find these notebooks, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm, like I used to do this shit? Like, <laughs> so funny. That's and awesome. Then, um, when I went to college, you know, like, we used to go out to the bars, obviously, with our fake IDs underage and stuff, and... There's- yeah, there was one like hot spot in Lincoln Park that we always went to. And my friend told me that his friend like was a promoter mm-hmm. and that their DJ was going out of town and they ne- needed a DJ for the weekend. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, like, tell him, like, Holy like shit. don't let him down. Like, please, like, have him, like, have him <laughs> you know? And they didn't care I was underage. So he gave me a chance. Wow. Like, there was no serato then you know so i had my yeah. music case which i couldn't even lift it was on wheels mm-hmm. <laughs> keys, you know so it's like the panic is real when you got 30 seconds left and you're flipping your own, <laughs> you know but yeah he was like super happy and then he brought me on as like one of their like official djs for like their promo company awesome how old are you then i think i was 18 17 18 so that was your first maybe, real maybe gig 19 yeah, like first real gig. It was like Lincoln Park. It was a bar. Nice. One you went and over, but nobody was. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lincoln Park. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, what college did you go to then? I went to Columbia. Oh, awesome! Gosh, I've had so many talented people from that went to Columbia on the show. That's awesome. Clayton Dale Chappelle, Agent Forte. You, oh, so many music trust people, really. I love that school. It's awesome. I was like, there is no way I'm going to a school that has sports and sh- I don't watch sports. I <laughs> fuck. It's like, that was never your thing. No. <laughs> what was your major? Uh, radio. Originally, it was um, audio arts and acoustics. And then, mm-hmm. like, 
I got into like my first class and it was in a lecture hall and he started like dissecting like the science behind the waveform and I was and he and then the first thing he told us was uh 95 percent of you will fail this course I'm like well I'm one of them <laughs> so I, I just walked out I'm like I'm like there's no way I'm like this is just like over the top like I wasn't ready to learn audio that much then now I wish I kind of would have stuck it out yeah. but I went for more of a, a broad uh major the way yeah. I could do like a little bit more and it wasn't so intense mm -hmm. you know for sure with that major it was like you know you're only studios yeah absolutely I, I did a similar thing at, at IU I was telecommunications but I focused on like media and production and I had like a minor in communication and culture studies so I could like have a focus but not on like one thing that's like you know i banking or you know whatever it might be like a very specific marketing because i wanted to learn a lot but i knew what i loved right you know what i mean so you did radio yeah. that's awesome yeah. yeah like you know i told my mom like you know i'm like well i want to keep going with the djing and like you know mm -hmm. and see you know what happens and she's like you're going to college <laughs> so they were supportive but realistic she was like, you don't even think about not going. Like, it's happening. You're going. So, <laughs> so that's when it, like, you know, it occurred to me. I'm like, okay, what major, you know, can I do that would be kind of in the same realm or, like, that I could use to my benefit later on? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's so very I, mature of you for 18 years old. A lot of people don't think like that. I know. Well, you know, that was, that was the only thing I had in mind. Like, I never never saw anything else in my future except for music and radio. That I was like, I need to make this work somehow. It's your calling. It's just, you know, like, I like I, I do believe I worked really hard, but I also think that I, I had a lot of people, like, um, supporting me and fighting for me and helping me. And, yeah, you know, sure. And really cool. A lot awesome. of mentors. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean already so far you've had a lot of people that have helped you along the way given you encouragement but we both know that it takes a lot of personal willpower to continue mm -hmm. doing those things right because it's one thing to do your first show when you're 18 and everybody's under 21 so they'll go wherever you are and then you continue to do things and everybody isn't about it and then it's kind of you continuing to push yourself so yeah Cause yeah, like when I, you know, started with that promo company, like all my friends were at my gigs. Cause like, yeah, it was our group of friends back right, then. Like, right, right, right. Used to go out and patch. Like we roll deep, you know. And yeah. now it's like I feel like I'm begging like one person to come out. I'm like, just come out for like an hour. <laughs> like you don't even have to pay for any drinks. Like come I on. Know. It's it's like I know, and we're getting to that age too, where people are married and have their own kids, and that's why it's so important. Like you have such a great brand that people know so i think that's why a lot of people stop and we'll get into this is because it's really hard to keep doing it when the amount of people that supported you in the beginning don't well they still support you but they aren't there right, right. like there because i was always so excited about gigs so i was like i can't wait to play this song for this friend or like i know this is going to go off with this type of people right and now we play so many different type of shows that you got to go in with no expectations and that's right. kind of the beauty about it to me why i love it so much is because I don't set the bar low. That's not the way I want to put it. But having no expectations and then making the most out of the night is, is why I continue to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I'm, well, I'm the same way because, you know, like, I'll have friends tell me, oh, yeah, we're going to come out and see you. And then, like, there's so many times where they don't come. So now I'm like, oh, right. I hate that. Yeah, like, you know, it's like, don't tell me you're going to come. <laughs> Just be honest. But, I would really rather you say, listen, I'm not going to come. So I'm like, Exactly. I'm like, don't, don't bullshit me for an hour that you're going to come. <laughs> and then, yeah. You know, you knew all along that you weren't. Oh, but... oh my gosh. I know yeah, what you mean. Like, Wait, you know, so. Like... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. Go ahead. This is the, this is the Skype thing, right? This is this... <laughs> There's like, <laughs> it's like that two second delay where like each of us is like wanting to I say something. The screen froze. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay. All right. I'll go. I'll go. So you did radio. I wanted to ask you about like when you got involved actually on B96 and you're the first and only female DJ on B96, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell it for everybody who doesn't know that's outside of Chicago and B96 comes up probably 90% of the time on the show, how much of an influence it is for a lot of DJs these days, hearing the mixes on the radio, 
I mean, I talked to Mr. Shaw about B96 for like 30 minutes. So like it's, it's massive. And I knew about it even in Indiana. So for those that don't know exactly what it is and the importance of it, if you could explain that for us and then when you got involved and what you do now. I mean, I, I think um, a lot of people that are from, you know, Chicago or even suburbs, you know, it, um, most of them have grown up on B96. Like, I mean, yeah. I can't speak for everyone, but like, I sure did. Mm-hmm. And I remember, you know, we would go to birthday parties when I was younger and like, you know, in the car, put on B96, B96. Like, <laughs> there, there was no other station ever even mentioned. Like, it was B96 <laughs> in every friend's car, you know, like, and I was like, I just thought it was the coolest thing. But mm-hmm. never in a million years did I ever think that that's where I would end up. Yeah. It was like this goal that I always wanted that I had in the back of my head, but I didn't think that I could accomplish it. Yeah. You know, like I'm, you know, they say you're your own harshest, harshest critic. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I was, you know, and I, I mean, I still am. And so I was like, ah, it's not going to happen, you know, like, and then I started to, you know, network and, I think it all started with um, we were able to get an internship with Columbia Mm -hmm. and then, but they weren't the on-air people weren't doing anymore. And I just so happened to go out with one of my friends one night Mm -hmm. and um, this was a long time ago, so they better not get mad at me. <laughs> she was like, it was, um, she was like, do you want to come out with me and Styles and Roman tonight? I'm like, what? Styles and Roman from B96? That's so cool. <laughs> she was like, yeah. You know, and like, we went to like some bar in Old Town, you know, like, I, like they were friends. I don't, I don't know, think there was anything going on. But sure. <laughs> anyways, long time ago. Um, you know, so I got to talking with Styles, and I was telling him, I'm like, I you know, I'm going to Columbia, like, it's about that time where, like, we can do an internship, but, like, um, we were told that you guys aren't taking anybody else right now, and he's like, give me the paperwork, I'll sign it. Wow. Shut up, are you serious? I'm like, you literally just met me tonight. <laughs> like, you're, you would do that? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I can tell, like, you're really serious about it. Wow. And so, um, I, I forgot how it all worked out, but it, it was still through Columbia. It was still through the school, but they signed off on it. Right. So I started an internship with them when they were my on gosh. air from two to seven. Yeah, it was just like surreal. I think like my <laughs> first day, they're like, oh, uh, by the way, um, Jason Derulo is coming in. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I'd never been to B96. Like, yeah. I never thought it, like it was just like a dream. I'm like, what? This is so crazy. This is so cool. My gosh. And then just like, you know, things started to unfold. I was like, okay, well, now I have my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. What else can I do here? I'm like, I would love to DJ on air, but I don't think that's ever a possibility. But how else can I work here? You know? Yeah. Was it was it male dominant, like in the studio then just out of curiosity? You know, what was it like for you as a young female there? Um, well, I mean, I was with the guys. So like, I didn't see the morning show, which, you know, because they're there so early. Right, of course. Um, it, was, it was actually, we had, we were pretty mixed before. Like, we had Nikki. Um, I mean, there was, like, quite a few girls and, and guys. But... It was a good vibe there. Always has been. Yeah. And I was, you know, thinking, like, you know, what else can I do? And I would talk to them about it. They're like, why don't you do promotions? They're mm-hmm. like... They're like, how do you think we got on air? They're like, we did exactly what you did. We got an internship. Uh-huh. They're like, we worked in promotions, and mm-hmm. now we're here. I'm like, ah, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, work your way up. I'm like, yeah. okay. But I did the back of my head. I'm like, it's not going to happen, but like, I want a job here. Yep. You know, so yep. I applied for a job in promotions and like, um, uh, Doug and Justin, um, Styles and Roman, and DJ Flipside, they all put in a good word for me, mm-hmm. you know, to the promotions uh, manager. Yeah. And, you know, with promotions, like, you know, one of our um, 
main jobs as a promotion coordinator, we had to like set up like audio equipment, you know, because yeah. we go out to like grocery stores, you know, like with Not, like of course. live, like yeah, you're you in know, the parking like, lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, we're like we're all, like giving away T-shirts and literally at a gas station, like that's like what we did. You know, yeah, that's fuck what it. We still are doing. You know, yeah, promos everywhere, but you know, that was one of the main things was setting up a sound system. I was like, oh my God, I can do that with my eyes closed. You know, I learned how to do that when I was 15. Yeah. So I got lucky and I got the job. Wow. And then I started working there and I was in promotions for a long time. And then I started to become close with Clip, uh, Flipside and, you know, I stayed close with um, Silas and Roman. Mm-hmm. And um, Flipside knew I was a DJ and like I, he had heard my uh, mixes and him and I actually knew each other from a mutual friend, which um, the mutual friend, he's actually one of the guys who taught me how to DJ. Wow. Yeah. So like they Jeez. actually used to perform together at the B Bashes. So like, it's <laughs> we, like knew each other through people. So he knew that like I DJed and he trusted our mutual friend, you know, because our mutual friend was talking me up so to say yeah and I was like, well, you know don't don't do all that like yeah <laughs> i don't know what he's gonna think like that's flip side you know yeah 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 and i remember just like living downtown and he called me one day and he said what are you doing and i go i'm just you know i'm just watching tv and he's like nope <laughs> i'm like what do you mean <laughs> like, get up start your mix if you want to get on air you got to turn in a mix a week He's like, so you got to turn in a demo every week to the music director if you want him to start noticing and start listening. I'm like, every week? (laughs) You know, and at that time, like, I made my mixes, like, it took me, like, two months, you know, because I would, like, perfect every little thing and I could not do them fast. Right. And so he would, like, call me and, like, you know, see that I was doing that and I started getting in the habit and I started turning them in and... After some time went by, like, um, all the mix masters went out to have lunch. Mm-hmm. But I was friends with all of them. Yeah. And they invited me, which I thought was, like, a little weird, you know? Because, like, I'm, I wasn't a mix master. But I'm like, okay, right. yeah, I'll go. Yeah. And then we got back to the station. And my boss, the music director, he was like, um, he's like, I have something I want to say. And I want to say it in front of everybody. And, like, all the mix masters are standing there. And, like, oh. <laughs> I have a picture of it somewhere. I think it's in my room. Um, and he told me that I was on air. And like, oh my cry, god, like, bawling, cry. <laughs> in like, front Styles of everybody, is, like, like hugging me. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this is it was, incredible. It was, like surreal. <laughs> yeah, geez, you're getting a little teary right now. I'll take a sip with you. Cheers. See, this is what quarantine's doing to me. What a significant moment, though. I mean. For them to acknowledge you like that, you worked so hard to get there. You weren't just somebody. You worked your way up. That's awesome. That's that such cool. a great story. Holy hell. And that was the beginning. And how long ago was that? Oh, my God. Um, I don't even know how many years I've been on now. Maybe five or six. You're so bad. I have the date like somewhere, like in my calendar. I have it. Yeah, you do. (laughs) It's an anniversary. It's like my anniversary. Yeah. (laughs) Gosh, what a cool story. And and you've been killing it ever since. And you've had so many great opportunities through B96. I mean, it still is the pillar of music in Chicago. I mean, Chicago is obviously the third largest city or the fourth largest city in the U.S. And third, third, sorry, third. I always get confused with Philadelphia. It's massive. That's my point, right? And you're on the biggest radio station, crushing sets. When do you play? When are your sets? Um, So on the weekends, our mixes run from midnight until 4 Mm a.m. And on Friday night, my mix is on at midnight. So I'm the first mix to play. And then Saturday night, uh, 2 a.m. Perfect. I bet, I guarantee, I remember when I first moved to Chicago, it was 2015. And we were coming back from the Aragon or something, right? And we were, like, with a bunch of people, and it was somebody's birthday, and we got a limo. And we were going downtown to Hubbard Street, and they had B96 on, and it was somebody DJing. And, and like, I had DJed in college, but, like, was still trying to get my feet wet and meet people. I didn't know anybody who was in in the scene. I was just with my friends, and I was like, 
bam, like this is the best DJ I've ever heard. Like everybody was going crazy. I bet it was you. And yeah. I, <laughs> let's just pretend at least. I just remember okay, like, <laughs> and a lot of those people, like, uh, I don't think any of those people I was with were from Chicago. They we had moved to Chicago, but they were like, dude, B96 is like one of the most important aspects of Chicago culture. Just like where you go, how you get there, it just creates the mood and they have awesome DJs. And I just remember thinking to myself like, man, Chicago is so cool. And yeah, it's just, it's so crazy because, like, that's how I always felt about B96, like, growing up. I was like, oh, my God, this is insane. This is so huge. Yeah. You know, but now that I've been there, now I'm more, like, accustomed to it. So I'm like, oh, okay, no one cares. You know, like, I, I kind of, like, brush it off. I'm like, no one cares that I'm on, you know? But then, <laughs> I like, care. It's a big deal to me. <laughs> but then people, are, like, every so often, like, you know, I'll be with, like, a friend and they'll, and they'll say, like, this is Meg, who, like, She's on B96, and they're like, what? And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't think it was, like, that big of a deal anymore. But, you know, I, I forget, like, it, it is, is a big deal. <laughs> yeah, I, F, FM radio is still alive because of stations like B96. I mean, it's a culture associated with it. So props mm. to you. I mean, it's incredible. I love it. I listen to your mixes as much as I can, and you kill it. Like, the spot you have is well-deserved. So props. Thank you. Cheers. I got, I got, I'm going low on the Jameson, so we're going to have to refill here soon, okay? I'll pour a shot. <laughs> uh, are you going to sip it, though? Let's be honest. I'll take it. Well, actually, since I'll be pouring it, it'll be a, a, the right amount. <laughs> it's just you and your dog and me, okay? There's nobody else right now. Oh, my God. He's always trying to come after liquor by having it in a cup. <laughs> Every time, like, I'll be holding a glass and I'll, like, try and put his whole face in it. He likes lotion and liquor, that's it? Yeah. He's so, he's so weird. <laughs> he would eat a paper towel. Like, honestly, like, I'll come out, like, of my bedroom in the morning, and I'll find yeah. the weirdest shit, like, under the couch. Like, that's where he, like, kind of hides. Yeah. When he finds something, uh -huh. you know? And I'm like, what? I'm like, what is this? Like, why do you even want to chew this? You know? <laughs> Dogs are so strange. I know. He's just, like, staring at me. They're so strange. Now, I want to, I want to ask you... I, I'm not like obsessed with celebrities, but I do love like finding out what they're really like. You've met Marshmallow, Halsey, Lizzo, Russ, like so many people through B96. Have there any people that either A, you've stayed connected with or B, like were surprised at who they were or C, even like had a great connection with? Um, I've had like, I've had so many different experiences and uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of them were when I uh, was in promotions, mm -hmm. which was cool because I saw, um, a different side of it especially yes. like when we had our um summer bash and jingle bash right like being in the uh, promotion team we were the ones like doing their dress rooms right so it was kind of interesting to like read what they request and like what they want oh and, man like, <laughs> oh my god like i am the biggest like j-lo fan i love her oh but, like, Jeez, I didn't, after we had her at Summer Bash, like, a couple, like, years ago when I was still in promotions, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I, like, listened to any J-Lo song for, like, a month. I was mad at her. I'm like, I'm not listening to her anymore. <laughs> and then I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, in, in, you know, a lot of it's, like, their, their teens and stuff, but it was just, it was a lot. Like, the demands were a lot. Yeah, for sure. Really, like, ridiculous things. But, um... I know you love Lizzo, right? You just you just met her or opened for her, right? Yeah, over the summer. That's awesome. I mean, she, like, she's still at the top, but this summer it was like, boom! Yeah, she killed it. She was great. I mean, she was, like, she was nice. It wasn't, like, over the top. I think, like, I don't know. Maybe she was in a mood that day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah everything with like, a grain of salt with them, like, right? I, I know exactly what you mean. It's, it's, it's odd. Some of them, like, are so genuine, though, and they yeah. just is who they are, but. Yeah, like, um, you know, some of them, like, that I've met, they'll start talking to you, and it's like, you forget how famous they are because of how humble they are, and it's just yes. so, like, surprising. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, they, it's almost like they don't know how famous they are. <laughs> <laughs> like, they probably try and keep that in their head. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotta be tough. Good answer though, J-Lo. <laughs> um, yeah, she was a tough one. Um, someone who was like really nice and especially like under uh, circum uh, 
certain circumstances was Ariana Grande. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we had her um, at Jingle Bash. I mean, we've had her, like, many times. Yeah. But there was one time when I was still working in promotions, and, you know, I had, like, the radio on in the back and, like, the, the badges and stuff. Yeah. And I feel someone tap me, like, on, on my shoulder on the back. So, you know, I turn around to, like, help whoever it is, and it's her. I'm like, <laughs> bro. It's like, that, that's not even the Skype freezing. Like, that's me. I was like, I didn't even know my- what the fuck is she even going to say to me right now? Yeah. And she was like, I can't find my phone. Like, I don't know what to do. And she's like, it was like, I, I just had it on the stage. But like the way she was saying it, I've n- like any of us were to lose our phone, like all hell breaks loose. You right. Know? Like the drum right. girl, the club. Can you announce it on the mic? <laughs> <Yeah>. No. <laughs> you know, like it, can't like, announce it on the mic. No, yeah. I've gotten <laughs> don't that. Find your phone, you drunk ass, or don't put it in your back pocket for someone to steal. Not my problem. Yep. But you know, like losing a phone or anything is like really nerve wracking. Like I'd be pissed, and like for sure. she was so nice about. I mean, that's like a penny in her pocket, but like <laughs> she but sure has a lot of important things on that phone. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like super calm, super nice, and I was like, well, let's do like. Um, you know, find my iPhone. She's like, okay. And we're like on my phone. I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh my God. Phone. <laughs> my phone. <laughs> like, this is so crazy. Ariana Grande is touching my phone. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it, it shows that it's in the building. So it has to, like, I don't think anyone left with it. Right. Turns out it was on the stage the whole time. She like set it down on the chair. But <laughs> she was like, she was really nice. I mean, there, there's been a lot of interesting ones, nice ones, mean ones, you know. Of course. Love that. I knew you had a few good stories up your sleeve about these people. Yeah, there's, right, there's some of... funny ones. I bet. I bet. Now, in, in, in coordination with those, right, like you always open up, like you've played to such huge crowds and you've got years of experience DJing, I mean, on B96, live festivals, whatever it might be. There can be a lot of ups and downs. What keeps you coming back? Man, that's tough because, you know, every so often I'll, like, start to kind of go through it. And I think, like, a lot of us as DJs, like, especially that do this, like, uh, full-time. Yeah. You know, or a lot more than part-time. 20-plus gigs a month type thing. Right. Like, it gets, you know, like, you start to feel like, Am I playing the same shit? Are people not into it? Like, yeah, you know, it's like I kind of like start to beat myself up. It, right. It's this, you know, I definitely get down on myself. Like, don't get me wrong. Sure. That happens like pretty often, but I try and find like different ways to like reinvent myself or like, yeah, I'll spend, you know, extra time like finding music or preparing stuff. It helps. Yeah, of course. You you got to keep challenging yourself, right? Like, I asked um, somebody we both know, DJ Heavy, that question, right? And yeah. he he was very honest about it too. He was like, "There's a lot of things about it that frustrate me, but I try and get through those things by challenging myself. You know, always learning what uh, the younger guys are doing. Like, how can I incorporate my style still, like a throwback type vibe? And it's tough, right? I mean. I've been DJing in Chicago now for five years, total of like seven I've been DJing. And that's not nearly as long as, as some of you vets. And when I hear you guys say that, like, it's still humbling for me because I know that like, this is a tough job and only other DJs really know how tough of a job this can be. So it is tough. And like, it also helps to talk to like friends that are DJs. Yeah. You know, Cause I feel like we all kind of go through that moment at different times. Yeah, we do. You know, it's like, like one week I'll like um you know I'll say to like Shaw or uh J-Con yeah like that's it I'm quitting fuck this I, <laughs> like, I'm done yeah I'm done yeah you know and they're like no you're not done you know and they give me a little pep talk and I'm like okay you're right yeah and then the next week like you know like J- <laughs> Jesse will be like I'm done yeah and I'm like no you're not <laughs> you know, oh my so gosh it's, I feel like it's important to help each other out. Like I've talked to uh, when I'm like really going through it, I'll like, I'll, uh, I'll hit up Clayton. Cause I know like Clayton's oh. been in this for a while. I you hit know, him like, up about that. He's stuff. done it all. Yeah. 
you know, like he's like a he's a he's a everything. He's a shrink, a DJ shrink. Yeah, he's just like a good like mentor in life, even you know. Yes. So it's like he's someone that like if I'm going through it, I'll like I'll text him like, hey, can you jump on a call today? I'm like about to lose my mind. <laughs> I need to figure something <laughs> out. <laughs> you know, so it it always helps to just talk to someone and kind of take a step back and. And then, you know, sometimes when I, I feel like I'm playing the same stuff, like, I realize, like, it, those, that usually happens, like, a few weeks in a row. Yeah. And I'm like, what am I doing that I, like, I was okay two weeks ago, but, you know, the past, like, three or two, I'm miserable. Right. You know, I'm like, what changed? And then it, like, dawns on me, I'm like, wait, I'm not really listening to the music. Yeah. Like, I'll see the titles, I'll see the, like, you know, whatever record pool I get it from, like, the hot boxes, you know, whatever. Right. The top downloads. But I'm not, like, list going down these all these songs and listening to stuff that I'm like, damn, this is my shit. Yeah, right. And I realized that's what gets me excited. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, and I did that, like, the other night. I couldn't sleep. I'm like, I'm going to go on Spotify and, like, maybe explore some new music. Yeah. And there I am in my bed, like, fuck it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, this is how I'm supposed to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> I love but that. I found all these great songs, you know? Yeah. That's so true. And I, I, I always try and do that as well. It's like, especially in an open format type lifestyle with, or with, with DJing, you know, it's like quick transitions and stuff. But it's so important to put your own spin on it. And, and that's how I, you know, the question was asked for me. It's, it's, it's doing the songs that actually, make a difference for me to enjoy it because right. you know I, i'm sure you've heard of Derek carter before he's got this famous quote that i swear i should get tattooed on me and it's like if the dj's not having fun then nobody else is having fun and i wholeheartedly true. believe that like regardless of the place you know you can play the top hits or whatever it might be and not no one noticed the dj but there's something about it like we have such a fun and unique job that has its trials and tribulations but the ability to play music for other people that we get to decide is something that should be appreciated by us and by everybody else. Right, like, and, and I totally see that because I, I've noticed that, like, the sets where I'm having more fun, where I'll, like, drop in, like, my jam somewhere. Yep. And, I, like, and I'm going off, and, like, it'll be a song that, like, isn't super mainstream, and then people see me, like, right. going ham to it. They're like, oh. 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 You know, like, wait a minute. Okay. I... <laughs> huh. That looks like a roof on the wit crowd right there. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time there last time, right? A little bit judgmental, but hey, that's all right. Cheers. Yeah. I like, I like. Everywhere you, grow, you go, oh, there's all types of people. <laughs> there's all types of people, but that's awesome. Now, to to really, like, transition off that a little bit. You play a ton of different types of sets. And, you know, like we said, a B96 opening, like a Roof on the Wit, Fremont, whatever it might be. Do you have an ideal set that you like to play? Like, what is the Miss DJ Meg set that you would, like, love to drop? Um, I mean, I might be wrong, but I feel like most DJs have a lot of their go-tos. Yeah. They know it's just going to get the crowd going. Right. But there's certain venues... Like, if I haven't been there in a minute, mm-hmm. you know, and I and I don't see them reacting, I'll start going to my go-tos. Yeah. And then it's like, if they're still not reacting, I'm like, fuck. That's like when I, you know, start to get down about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, but then that's when I take into consideration, okay, every night is different. Yeah. Every day is different. People are always going to feel different. Mm-hmm. You know, music is subjective. Yeah. And you really can't please everybody, you know. You no, have you have one guy come up like, oh, my God, you're fucking awesome. And then the next <laughs> person comes up, is the next DJ coming on? Like, Oh, like, ooh, that one, that is, a, that is the worst. Yeah, like, it's just, you know. So you I just roll, <laughs> roll with the punches. I know, I know. But you have had a lot of awesome shows. I mean, you played Tau, of course, Fremont, Roof on the Wheel, like I said, Federale's Prism. B96 Toyota Park, United Center, I mean, and Pride events too, Pride in the Park and Pride Fest, like, I know you crush those shows, and you just played on the one last summer with Steve Aoki, I know how important that was to you, right? Yeah, like, all of them are, and, you know, I'm, I'm very great 
grateful and very lucky to have been given the opportunities, you know, that I've gotten. And obviously I have like, you know, so many people to thank for that. Yeah, of course. Like it's surreal, you know, and I like during those times, like, and and it's funny because like the biggest shows are usually like the shortest sets Mm -hmm. or short sets, you know? So it's like, (laughs) I literally will go ape shit at my girlfriend for like an entire week because I'm trying to plan a 15 minute set. (laughs) You know, it's like. And she's like, okay, like I'm, I'm gonna go in the other room. What's her name? Demonte. Oh my gosh, she deals with it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> like you're acting crazy. That's enough from you tonight. <laughs> That's but, awesome. Yeah, she understands. Like it's just it, it's nerve wracking, and it's not even like that. I think I'm gonna fail. It's just like I wanted to be the best that it could possibly be, mm-hmm. and I don't want to like I, I don't want to let anybody down. And yeah. also just the amount of people, I get nervous. Like, I used to get nervous giving speeches in English class. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> at, um, That's good. at the bashes, like, sometimes they have the camera where they'll, you know, zoom in on you. Yeah. Where it's on the, like, on the screens. Mm-hmm. And they've zoomed in on me, like, when I first started, like, mm-hmm. at Jingle Bash. Yeah. On my fingers, like, what I'm doing, you know, where the, the cue points are on the computer. Right. And I'm shaking so bad. I'm like, can you <laughs> not put the camera on my fingers right now? <laughs> Literally, like, oh my god! I'm like, they're gonna think I'm like convulsing. Over yeah. That's <laughs> that <So> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. Like, I watched a video of you today. Um, I think it was from Pride Fest. And I've had a lot of friends. I know Avi Sec plays there. A good friend of mine, uh, Spencer Scheinman, Shiny. He's uh, in. He just like has is always told me how amazing that event is. And I've been through before, and like that whole stage, like it's awesome. I mean, the gay community in Chicago is like so rad, so badass. Like, I mean, it's like it's, it's just such a an energy. And yeah. that's probably like the only set that I'm not nervous. For maybe like the first like 20 30 seconds do you, why, why do you think that is i mean i always just get nervous in front of people like right you know there was something that um heavy said to me when him and i were playing a brunch together at fremont one time yeah i was playing the first set and you know he came in for the 330 set mm-hmm. and it was slam like wall to wall but like you know when you start the first set you, you get to ease into it yep but when you walk in for that 3.30 set, you're walking into a shit show parade. You literally are coming into Main Stage Festival. You got to be ready to go. Yeah, and it was just wall to wall. And, like, Heavy, being, like, the amazing fucking DJ that he is, uh-huh. he turns to me, he's like, if you could feel my heart right now, he's like, it is pounding out of my chest. <laughs> like, oh, shit, you do not get nervous. It's like, no way. <laughs> And then there was another time where it was flip-flopped, where he was playing, and then I came in, actually, I think it was the NBA All-Star Weekend, so it was even busier, and I'm like, I'm like, well, I think I just shit my heart out of my ass, like, I don't even know what to do anymore. (laughs) I'm like, I'm freaking out, and he's like, you're good, you got this, I'm like, nope. (laughs) So, I know that feeling, you feel worn out before things even get started. Oh my god, I was like, no. (laughs) (laughs) so scary. (laughs) Isn't that so much fun, though, when, like, we now like the longer you're in the scene like you run into friends when you're DJing and it's like such a at least for me like I know it's been like that for you for a while but I felt that I've developed closer friendships and relationships with people that I've met that are doing the same thing as me than I ever did before you know and it's because we're on the same game yeah I mean like I think I'm trying to interview everybody that's in the music trust because it's just like the greatest group of people and there's so many talented people and like the DJ firm too. I I was going to ask you like your relationship with the music trust and why you think companies like that are so important to the scene in Chicago. They do so much. Clayton shout out. I could shout him out every day. Yeah, I am so grateful to them because I, I actually met Clayton a long time ago. I want to say it was at boardroom. I don't Mm -hmm. know. You remember Boardroom? Or, I've heard you know, of it. If it's you were come living up. in Chicago at the time. It's come up, that's absolutely. That's where him and I met. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, our, our, like, relationship grew from there. And, like, you know, he, he told me about the company. And, like, and I wasn't working with anybody. You know, I was I was kind of just trying to get gigs as they came. Yeah. 
you know, and they like brought me on to their company. So it was like in the beginning. So I've known him and Aaron for like a very long time. That's and awesome. Always taking care of me from day one. Like I've yeah. worked for other like companies that do, you know, bookings. Yeah, sure. And I won't name names, but you know, some people don't know how to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Music tr- you get the you get the no check people. in the mail before you even remember you played a gig with the music trust. Right, like I have never like been concerned about anything with the music trust. They're fair, they're professional, they take care of you. Like, yep. I'm very grateful for them because, like, I would say the majority of my gigs probably come from them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're they're communicative. Like, you get a text the day before, like automated. It's, it's, they treat it, they treat it much more professionally than a lot of people I've experienced in, Mm -hmm. in my career. So I always want to mention them, especially when I connect with their music trust DJs. So perfect answer. I mean, they're so important there and and they do things differently in the sense that they align with the venue before it's just like, just some DJ that's get booked. You know, it's like, you don't just get booked here because you're this or that. It's like, there's a certain, you know. Uh, you know echelon i guess and even when you when you get into the music trust or into stripes there and it's like i feel really part of a family there so it's yeah it's, it, it really is you know i i i think everyone like looks out for each other there's still like some new names that i people i haven't met yet sure. but it's cool because you know the music trust is a lot of um you know like the vets and then a lot yeah. of new guys like yeah the, you know, which is awesome because it's bringing more people together. It's true. It's more true. People. Shout out to Music Trust. Clayton watches every episode, so I know. Hey. <laughs> He's a big fan. Fucking love that guy. <laughs> Meg, I want to ask you because you, you brought it up already a couple times, you know, some obstacles you've had to overcome. Being a DJ, being anything involved in the creative industry can have its obstacles overcome. Are there any that come to your mind and, and you know, what are some things you've learned from them? Like obstacles? Yeah. What have you overcome, like, to get to where you're at now? Um, I mean, I don't know if this is like going too deep, but um, I'm. I know a lot of people deal with it, but you know, I deal with um, depression and anxiety. So mm. even if I played great one night and everyone's saying it, even the managers, like, I'll still feel like tonight sucked, this and that, you know, and I'll get down on myself. So. You know, it it just really helps to have an outlet, whether it's friends or, you know, my girlfriend or my parents, just someone to talk to. Mm-hmm. And then taking a step back, you know, or maybe taking off from a gig. Yeah. You know, like, which I rarely ever do, if, especially if I have something scheduled. But sometimes, like, you need to do things for your own mental health. Yeah. You know, especially if it's something you love and you're doing it so often that you're beating it to death to the point where you're not enjoying it anymore mm-hmm. you know because i'm not gonna lie and say that i love every single set that i've loved every gig yeah there's been gigs where i'm like oh my god i've been <laughs> here for 12 hours <laughs> <laughs> you know it yeah. just feels like forever but yeah i i find i try and find ways to reinvent myself or you know do something different or just something to change my way of thinking mm-hmm. absolutely sense. it does thank you for sharing that i mean <clears throat> it's it's come up a lot you know it's we've talked about it it's it's a tough job there's a lot of critics out there and if there's anything i believe it's that people that are lower than you are the only ones that will critique you and people that are higher than you will always support you because they were at your level in one way or another or still have those thoughts and I think that's probably my favorite part about Chicago is everyone is so welcoming. When you are feeling down, you got a lot of shoulders you can lean on. Yeah. Lots. And that's, you know, it's a real thing. It's something I deal with daily. It's something I'm, I know a lot of people deal with. So, mm-hmm. you know, having music as an outlet just really helps. And then having people to talk to helps. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you sharing that. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a big think, you know, It's important. Like, it's probably something that not a lot of people share. So maybe, you know, maybe a good thing to share that everyone can get through it. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> just, get, just get a dog that licks your lotion and drinks your liquor. <laughs> it's literally, he's over me. I don't know. If, wait, 
if you can see him. Oh. <laughs> he's, like, he's just a bump on a log. That is such a great dog. <laughs> I told him I was going to take him for a walk like three hours ago. He's so mad at me. Oh, <laughs> they understand that, right? You say walk. Oh, oh yeah, for sure. He knows everything. <laughs> I, like, I really feel like he knows. Like, he'll get mad at me. <laughs> What's your shirt say? That's awesome. You know, I, I bought this shirt, like, um, I think back December, I was gonna like it was a possible outfit choice for Jingle Bash, mm -hmm. and then I ended up wearing something else. But I'm like, wow, this shirt is so appropriate with what it says for everything going on. Yeah, it's awesome. I don't break know down think. before the breakthrough. It looks great. It's from uh, it's a local um, uh, company, uh, Iridium. Yeah, I've heard of them. It's in uh, Block 37. They have like two stores in there. Nice. I'm actually I'm moving over there uh, coming up in uh, in June, so I will check it out. Not too block, like right across the street from Block Thirty Seven, so I'll check it out. That's a nice area. I know. I'm not I far from there. I'm in the South Loop. Are you? I'm in the Loop. I'm at uh, Van Buren and Franklin. We're very close. Oh, wait. God, I wonder if you live in my old building. Two thirty five. Shut up. Are you serious? Yep. <laughs> I'm here right now. Look. There's oh, my jail. God. The jail's right there. You can't see it. I'm on my computer. You know, a funny story about that jail. Yeah. Our windows face it. And my old roommate and I, like, we, we would watch them playing basketball. Same. You know? I do it every day. Right? So you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Dude, my old roommate, like, no filter. She, like, the, she's so funny. Um, I mean, she's married now, you know, but like at the time, you know, we were like little shitheads still in college. Right. She was like, she's like, let's just give them a show. And she would go to the window and like flash them, you let's know. Let's just give and them I'm a like, show. Oh my God. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, what else do they have to look forward to? I'm like, well, apparently something now. Damn. I'd like to meet this lady. <laughs> oh man. We were so goofy in that apartment. <laughs> it's so fun. We, I moved, I lived here when I was first in Chicago. And uh, wanted to give it one more shot. My roommate's moving, so I wanted to see it one more time. It's a, it's a great building, great location. And I don't know. I just, I, I've always loved downtown Chicago. Coming from Indiana, like, you know, I have a corner unit. I can see the, the Willis Tower, the Sears Tower, I call it. That's yeah, another. see, yeah. my next place I want, I think the next place I want to buy, I really, like, I hate, I'm over-renting. And just pissing away money, you know. I know, I know. The South Loop's awesome, though. I know. I was looking I at love the South. This area. It's what? great. It's. I was gonna. I was looking at a lot of places in the South Loop, but I just like found one of those places that's just a steal. It's yeah. right. It's right next to. Uh, it's right next to that Walgreens in the Chicago Theater. So, pretty great oh. location over there. So, right, next time we're both playing at Roof on the Wit, we can hang out before, then we can hey. walk up over. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I love gigs where I can walk there. <laughs> Seriously, like, I'm so close. I'm, like, what, five-minute drive down Michigan? Yeah, I love that. That's great. Super close. That's how I know we're getting more mature. I'm looking to quick ride to my gig, and then I'll quick ride back. I know. I'm, like, oh, it's so nice living close. <laughs> you know? I, know? I hate, like, commuting for work. Especially, like, when we get done, it's, like, late, you know, or tired. Yeah. You want to you want to make it as easy as you can to get home. I, in fact, I'm much more keen to take gigs that are geographically closer to where I live. Yeah, for sure. Back in the day, I would have I would have took a gig in Naperville, no problem. <laughs> I actually um, did one out in Schaumburg. Actually, that was my last at drink. Very last gig. Yeah. Well, that, that was my last gig dope. before the quarantine. That was your last gig. When was that? Um, it was what that Saturday was it the seventeenth. Oh, yeah, it would have been, like, St. Patrick's uh, Day weekend, right? Yeah, like, I was supposed to have three sets that day. It was supposed to be the wit, apogee, and drink. Yeah. The wit canceled right. all their sets. And then apogee, they still had me. And then I ran out to Schaumburg. But that was the last set I played. How are you feeling? Are you, are you fiending? Like, are you chilling? What's it, what's it been like for you? You know, well, it, I haven't, like, touched any like cj's turntables like since then yeah and i'm like am i avoiding it on purpose am i not ready yet 
And then yesterday, I'm like, all right, we're going in. <laughs> and I was just like messing with my turntables because, like, yeah, I, had, I love your setup. I like I have my turntables over here, and then I would show you over there, but I'm like redoing my like studio area, so it's kind of a mess. Okay. And I put duct tape on the wall like an idiot, and I took the paint <laughs> off. <laughs> I can't, I made this like art piece and like put like um, decorative vinyl around it. Like they're not yeah. even uh, 12 inch or like eight inch. Yeah. But like this whole thing I made is like kind of heavy, but there's no way it's 16 pounds. And I was using, I put like 87 command strips on the back of that. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is on there. It's not. <laughs> oh yeah. There. I'm in the bathroom and I hear like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, oh God. I know I walk out, it's off the wall. I'm like, oh, okay, round two. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's just like on the ground. I'm like, I don't know if I have the energy to put it up for a third time. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I'm like, later. I'll work on it another day. Not like just I'm listen, so busy. Add it to one of those projects that you're going to get done. And, you know, <laughs> it can be one of those things that you never do, depending on how long this lasts. So yeah. whatever happens with the timeline. I like, you know, obviously everything that's going on is not good whatsoever yeah. but i will say it, it's good in a sense where i think a lot of people are starting to appreciate each other more mm -hmm. like uh relationships friends things you know simple like, things yeah like you know it, it was getting to that point actually where djing was becoming a job so it was like this almost kind of happened at the perfect time where i'm like wow I'm ready, you know, like, yeah, I'm ready to go back or just like even mess around like to the point where like I wanted to mess around with my turntables at home, like for fun. Yeah. You know, because it got to a point where I was like, I don't even want to look at the turntables. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel yeah. I've been uh, I've been trying to stay busy with that, like doing new types of things because I know the DJ will come back. But, you know, we got to do what we can. You got to stay fresh. Yeah. Like. And honestly, sometimes it just takes like one song for me. If I hear a new song that I'm like, oh, oh, shit. I got to mix this in. <laughs> my, like, I'm like a new person. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't hear anything that was like inspiring me since this should happen. And then I heard this song like uh, a couple days ago. I'm like, oh, I'm back, motherfuckers. What like, was it? Um, so, I mean, a lot of people... Um, aren't familiar with her name but they know the song um her name is karen harding mm -hmm. yeah i definitely recognize the name do you know her song say something the zach samuel remix yes oh i love zach samuel uh, like that song i've introduced to every single one of my friends and it's uh -huh. like our just our forever anthem wow and i'm I like i can't believe you just said zach samuel like not a lot of people know him and he makes the most rad remix oh, he he like he made that song like the way i mean the original is great but yeah the way he redid it i swear like after i became obsessed with it i heard it like h and m akira like, <laughs> like, Damn, that's how you know you made it if you're playing in akira and h and m yep i was like why is everyone giving away my secret weapon <laughs> hey turn this off next song yeah like so when i was that night i couldn't sleep you know, and I'm listening to, I go on Spotify, and it brings up, like, you know, music you would like or whatever, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, Discover. It it showed her name. I'm like, oh, my God, she had a song come out, and I didn't know. I, I was so disappointed <laughs> in myself. I'm like, oh, my God, I hope it's good. I hope it's good. Yeah. I put it on. I'm like, holy shit, we are back in action. <laughs> yeah, baby. Woo! Oh, it's so good. It's called Rely. Like, say, in, uh, she samples... Um, Ghetto Superstar. Oh, shit. But, like, made it, like, house. Yeah. It's very uplifting and, like, happy and, like, kind of really goes well with everything going on in the world now. Yeah. And um, who else is on the track um, produce it? I think uh, Future Kings and I don't know how they say their name, but it's spelled L apostrophe trick. Like electric. Yes, I saw you shared it. They made yes. Yeah. Latric, yes. Mm -hmm. Latric is actually a really famous producer, and I'm totally blanking on his name right now. And he just I, does... like I have his stuff. He's dope. I have a lot of his shit. I'm blanking on his name, but yeah, he's a really famous producer too. Great. I will check that out. Yeah, so like when I saw the artist and producer, I was like, okay. I'm like, all right. I'm like, 
I want to love this so bad. Like, yeah. give me another say something track, you know? Yeah. And then I put on, I'm like, and we've arrived. Oh <laughs> like, my gosh. Like, it was like just what I needed to like get my spirits up, to, you know? I love that. Will you take a shot with me? Oh yeah, let me go get the bottle. Me too. <laughs> Just because we're in quarantine doesn't mean we can't drink together. Oh, we will definitely drink together. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't stopping. For everybody who still that doesn't stop the interview now, because we're going to keep it going here. <laughs> we got the whole bottle. <laughs> Look at that. two peas in a pod. Hey. No, like, it's interesting, because, like, I feel like, you know, I'll, I'll have friends over fairly often yeah like before a gig like to pregame or something sure. and i'm like you that's guys gotta bring go, right? what that's how you get them to go you gotta say you're coming to the pregame yeah <laughs> i'm like because i'm like because i have to leave for my gig so you guys can stay for like 20 minutes <laughs> and then we go <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah but, um, i always tell them i'm like hey like can you guys bring some liquor like i don't have anything yeah now i have all this liquor and i'm by myself like what am i gonna drink myself into a calm <laughs> <laughs> you know? see like now i don't know the measurement how about you tell me when to stop i'll tell you when i'll tell you when yeah you tell me when to stop and i'll drink it uh, all. when why is every time i put something in the freezer it like seems kind of syrupy it's when you pour. Syrupy. yeah it's because there's it's poison realistically so yeah, yeah. <laughs> just swallow like um what is it in um is it fireball they say oh. windshield wiper fluid or something. Accurate. I, I've heard something weird like that. Yeah. You know, people still smoke cigarettes and there's rat poison in it or whatever it is. So yeah, we all got our vice. Signs on them. We all got our vice, I guess. I know. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Cheers to you, Miss DJ Mag. This has been so Cheers. much fun. Watch, you're going to see me take Are you going to drink it all? Because that's a lot, actually. I think I could do it. Okay, cheers. I'll do mine. I have like a good lunch, so we good. <laughs> okay. Mm. Nice job. Oh my god, I didn't even hold it in my mouth. You're good. That's the other thing, though. Sometimes oh. I'll get it all out of the glass at once. Uh huh. And I can't get myself to swallow it. Everyone <laughs> makes fun of me when I say that. I get it. I'm gay. Ha ha ha. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's too inappropriate. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I love but it. But yeah, like, I can't, like, I'll hold it in my mouth because I'll, then I'll taste it. And I'm like, oh no, this is not going down. And then eventually I'm like, all right, you know, the whole like nose plug. <laughs> yeah. My gosh. You're great. This has been so much fun. I know. I love this. I really wish you could have done it in person, but you made my night. And this has been a blast. And once again, props to you. You crush it. You like are one of the most talented DJs that I've ever met, I've ever seen. So thank you so much for coming on. No, thank you. I totally don't agree with you, but that is so nice of you. To Whatever. Say. Everyone's entitled to their opinion, right? That's very nice of you. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, I'll talk to you soon. And for everybody tuning in, thanks for watching with us. Hey. Hey, say bye to your doggy for me. Hey, you want to say bye? Oh, yeah. Say bye. He's so mad. He's totally sleeping. <laughs> He's like, what You're going to go on a walk. It's time. I'll be saying bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye. You go out for a walk? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's game time. Bye, Meg. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank bye. you.